Imagine holding something worth more than gold not in a vault, but slithering in your hands. Snake farming fuels billion-dollar industries like luxury fashion and life-saving medicine. But how does it all work? How are millions of snakes bred, handled, and transformed into venom, meat, and high-end products? In this video, we'll dive into the dangerous yet fascinating world of snake farming, from breeding and venom extraction to the global demand for their skin and meat. Stick around, because what you're about to see will blow your mind. To understand why snake farming exists, we need to follow the money. The global demand for snakes can be traced to three major industries, medicine, fashion, and cuisine. First, let's talk about venom often referred to as liquid gold. Snake venom is essential for producing anti-venom, which saves countless lives every year. But it doesn't stop there. It's also used in cutting-edge medical research, helping create drugs for heart conditions, chronic pain, and even cancer treatments. To give you an idea of its value, a single gram of venom from certain species can sell for over $1,500, making venom extraction a critical part of snake farming. Then there's the fashion industry. If you've ever seen a snakeskin handbag, pair of boots, or luxury belt, chances are it came from one of these farms. Snakeskin is a prized material in high-end fashion, fetching prices of up to $4,000 per piece in Western markets. This demand has turned snakeskin into one of the most profitable products in the farming industry, with a thriving market in countries like Indonesia, Thailand, and Vietnam. And finally, there's the culinary world. Snake meat is considered a delicacy in many cultures, especially in Southeast Asia. It's rich in protein and believed to have medicinal benefits, making it a popular choice in traditional dishes. For instance, in Indonesia alone, over 10,000 tons of snake meat are processed every year, adhering to strict hygiene standards. For some farmers, the meat trade is just as important as venom or skin. With such massive demand, it's no surprise that snake farming has become a global industry. But how do farmers manage the challenges of raising millions of snakes? Let's dive into the fascinating process of snake farming itself. So, how do you raise millions of snakes? It all starts with the right setup breeding, incubation, and careful handling. Snake farming isn't just about volume, it's about precision, safety, and understanding these fascinating creatures. The first step is breeding. Farmers select snakes based on their species, size, and the quality of their skin, or venom. Once selected, breeding pairs are carefully introduced into controlled enclosures. These enclosures are designed to mimic the snake's natural environment, providing the right balance of humidity, temperature, and hiding spaces. A single breeding pair can produce dozens of eggs, making this stage critical for scaling the operation. Once the eggs are laid, they are moved to specialized incubation units. These units maintain precise conditions as even a slight variation in temperature or humidity can harm the eggs. Typically, snake eggs take about 60 to 90 days to hatch. During this time, farmers monitor them constantly, ensuring they remain healthy and free from mold or other issues. Watching a baby snake emerge from its egg is a mesmerizing sight one that marks the start of its journey in the farming process. Once hatched, the snakes are moved to individual or group enclosures, depending on their species. These enclosures are not just cages, they are carefully designed habitats. For venomous snakes, safety measures are paramount, with double layers of protection to prevent escapes. Feeding the snakes is another crucial aspect. Each species has specific dietary needs, some thrive on rodents, while others require fish or small birds. Farmers must ensure the food is fresh and nutritionally balanced to keep the snakes healthy and growing. On average, snakes take anywhere from six months to a year to reach maturity, depending on their purpose, whether for venom extraction, skin harvesting, or the meat market. Now that we've seen how snakes are raised, it's time to explore the most dangerous and valuable part of the process. Extracting venom, 
the so-called liquid gold of this industry. Snake venom is the crown jewel of this industry, often referred to as liquid gold. Its value lies not just in its price, but in its applications from saving lives with anti-venom to advancing groundbreaking medical treatments. But how do farmers safely extract venom from such dangerous creatures? Let's take a closer look. Venom extraction is a highly skilled and dangerous task. Farmers use specialized tools and techniques to ensure safety for both the handler and the snake. The process begins by gently restraining the snake, usually by holding its head securely while avoiding harm. The snake's fangs are then positioned over a collection jar covered with a thin membrane. By applying slight pressure to the venom glands, the snake releases its venom into the jar. This process lasts only a few seconds and doesn't harm the snake, allowing it to continue producing venom regularly. The venom is then carefully sealed and stored under strict conditions, as even a tiny amount can be lethal if mishandled. So, what makes venom so valuable? For one, it's essential for producing anti-venom, which saves thousands of lives every year. But it doesn't stop there. Scientists are also using venom to develop treatments for chronic pain, heart conditions, and even cancer. To give you an idea of its worth, some types of venom can fetch up to $1,500 per gram. It's no surprise that many snake farms focus heavily on venom extraction as their primary revenue source. As the industry evolves, technology is playing a bigger role in making venom extraction safer and more efficient. Some farms have started using robotic systems that can handle snakes with precision, reducing risks for farmers. This innovation isn't just about safety, it also helps scale up production, meeting the growing global demand for venom. With venom extracted, the next step for many farmers is the meat market, a cultural and nutritional cornerstone in regions where snake farming thrives. Let's dive into how snake meat is prepared and sold. While venom is often seen as the most valuable product of snake farming, the meat market is equally important. In many cultures, snake meat is a delicacy, a symbol of tradition, nutrition, and even medicinal benefits. Let's explore how this market operates and its significance. In countries like Indonesia, Vietnam, and China, snake meat isn't just food, it's part of the culture. It's believed to have numerous health benefits, from improving circulation to boosting energy and even curing ailments. Snake dishes are often served during festivals or special occasions where they symbolize strength and vitality. For many communities, this tradition has been passed down for generations, making it a key part of their identity. Processing snake meat requires strict hygiene standards. Once the snakes are harvested, they are carefully cleaned, skinned, and cut into portions. Factories and markets often follow government regulations to ensure the meat is safe for consumption. In Indonesia alone, over 10,000 tons of snake meat are processed annually. Farmers work with both local markets and exporters to meet this demand, ensuring the meat is fresh and high quality. For many farmers, the meat trade is a vital source of income. It not only supports their families, but also creates jobs in processing, transportation, and sales. The ripple effect of this market extends far beyond the farm, making it a significant driver of local economies. In this way, snake meat isn't just about tradition, it's about survival and opportunity for countless people. Now that we've covered the role of snake meat in culture and commerce, let's shift our focus to the most glamorous part of the industry, the snakeskin trade, where luxury and craftsmanship come together. When it comes to snake farming, few things capture the imagination like snakeskin. Its unique texture and luxurious appeal make it a prized material in high-end fashion. But how does raw snakeskin transform into designer handbags, boots, and belts? Let's take a closer look. The journey begins at the farm, where snakes are harvested specifically for their skin. Once removed, the skin is cleaned and treated to preserve its quality. 
This step is crucial as even a minor flaw can drastically lower its value in the luxury market. Farmers often use natural methods like salt curing or air drying to maintain the skin's integrity. These methods have been refined over decades to ensure the skins are ready for the next stage. Once preserved, the raw snake skin is sent to specialized tanneries. Here, the skins undergo a meticulous tanning process to make them durable and supple. This step involves treating the skin with chemicals to prevent decay and enhance its texture. After tanning, the skins are dyed in a range of vibrant colors from classic earth tones to bold metallic hues. This customization allows designers to create unique and eye-catching products, ensuring snakeskin remains a staple in luxury fashion. The final step is craftsmanship. Skilled artisans cut and shape the snakeskin into high-end products, from handbags and wallets to shoes and belts. Each piece is a testament to the artistry and precision required to work with such a delicate material. Snakeskin products are in high demand, especially in Western markets, where a single item can sell for thousands of dollars. This global appeal ensures that the snakeskin trade remains one of the most profitable aspects of snake farming. As we've explored, the snake farming industry is a fascinating world, a blend of tradition, innovation, and high-stakes commerce. From venom to meat to snakeskin, every part of these creatures serves a purpose, fueling industries worth billions of dollars. But as this industry grows, it raises important questions. How can we ensure that it remains ethical and sustainable? Can we balance the demand for luxury and tradition with the need to protect these animals and their ecosystems? Ultimately, the future of snake farming will depend on how we navigate these challenges. Will it evolve into a model of sustainability, or will the costs outweigh the benefits? Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you think about snake farming? Is it a necessary trade-off for progress, or should we rethink our reliance on such industries? Drop your comments below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more fascinating deep dives into industries you never knew existed. And if you enjoyed this video, stay tuned for our next one, it's going to blow your mind. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.